Kamusta Poe, Malagayang Kadating, our mission house here in Tanza. My name is Frank Williams. My wife and I are missionaries of God the Father, Jesus Christ, His only Son, under the leadership and direction of the Holy Ghost, His anointing. And uh, many things are taking place in the world right now. People are concerned about the future. And uh, when you are a child of the King, when you are a child of God, when you've been uh, washed in, uh, by His blood, you can, uh, you don't have to be afraid. You can look at what is taking place around the world and say that our redemption draws nigh. So we're going to look at some scriptures uh, that indicate that uh, the rapture of the church could take place at any time. Uh, as we uh, take that, this... Uh, uh, we see that uh, Russia and the military of Russia is attacking the nation of the Ukraine. And there's a lot of prayer, a lot of believers who are praying for their uh, brothers and sisters uh, uh, in the Ukraine. And it seems like the uh, prayers are producing fruit and that uh, God is protecting uh, the children of God uh, that yet God is, in all of the prayers are not receiving the credit it's, uh, the credit is going to the people of the Ukraine and the decisions of their political leaders and their military leaders that can uh, lead people to bad uh, conclusions uh, uh, about the future. It can cause people to uh, not give to God all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. So we need to notice that things are around the world are taking place and uh, the Bible does tell us that there will be a ruler, a charismatic uh, leader that will rise up and he will seem to have the answers uh, to the problems that the world has. And so uh, we have to remember that the Apostle Paul teaches us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, that we know in part and we prophesy in part. We look into the future and we know in part and we prophesy in part. We look at Scripture and we're looking through a glass darkly. Uh, we look through uh, tinted uh, windows. God has put... Uh, tents, uh, colors on our glasses toward the uh, future to phase out, to, to, uh, to protect ourselves from the harsh uh, realities of the future. So he protects us so that we cannot see exactly what tomorrow holds and how things are going to play out. We, as at best, we read the Word of God and we see uh, through that glass darkly. We can see shapes. We can uh, we can uh, we can see shapes and patterns, and uh, we can interpret that based on the knowledge that God has given us. That his revelation to us 
in many cases is partial revelation. He does not allow us to see things perfectly. Again, you may have partial revelation, but the only one who has full, complete revelation on the events that uh, will take place uh, before the rapture of the church. Uh, only the Father has all of the details. So it's good to listen to the uh, scholarly and uh, educated uh, men and women of God that God has given some insight, but it's partial insight. It's not complete. And when uh, you compare the insight of men and women of God, uh, they may be seeing a part of the same event and interpreting it uh, based on what they see and what they uh, know, based on the knowledge that God has given them, and it's uh, partial. We have partial knowledge and uh, partial revelation. So uh, we want to look at the Word of God because we know what we read in Scripture is correct. It's from God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And uh, we need to rightly divide the Word of Truth. And um, the Word of God tells us that uh, no man ha is, uh, has all of the answers. Only our Father in Heaven and what he uh, re reveals to us in his word. And again, uh, it's partial revelation. And uh, we have to trust in the Lord. One thing that we can be certain is, is no matter how the Father allows it to play out, he is in full control and there is nothing that will take place that will catch our Father by surprise. So um, let's look at uh, the Gospel of John. We're going to start with uh, chapter 13. There are uh, similar uh, chapters. Uh, Matthew 24 is a companion to this. And so is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21. There are many uh, verses in Scripture that tie into this, uh, but today we're only going to cover uh, some of the highlights from uh, Mark, chapter 13. Some of these things have uh, come to pass, and... Um, already have been fulfilled and some of these things uh, will take place in the future and possibly much sooner than many people are willing to consider. Verse 1, And as he, as Jesus, went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, what manner of stones and what buildings are here? I have not been to Jerusalem. I have not seen the temple. Uh, Herod was on the throne. He was the uh, governor for at this time, and that uh, Herod was not a Jewish king. He was not from the line of David. And uh, Herod tried to curry favor from the Jewish people. So he embarked on a big 
a building project on the temple. Uh, so the remain uh, the the structures on the Temple Mount known as the Wailing Wall that isn't uh, from it's not the remains of Solomon's Temple when uh, what Herod sought to do was he was seeking favor from the Jewish people as he expanded the Temple Mount so that what is on the Temple Mount now is the ruins from uh, where uh, he expanded the Temple Mount complex. But, uh, but it is not the remains of the actual Temple, of Solomon's Temple, uh, which was destroyed in 70 AD also with the city of Jerusalem. So J Jesus tells us uh, about this. Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He was talking about the temple itself it was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. There were rumors of the walls being uh, filled with gold so the Roman soldiers they destroyed the temple and they were looking for treasure. They were looking to spoil they were looking for riches in the walls of the temple. And so this occurred in 70 AD. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him, privately. Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of these things uh, shall be fulfilled? Looking for signs. People today are looking for signs. Some people recognize the invasion of the Ukraine as a prelude for what will take place in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. What was prophesied by Ezekiel in uh, chapters 36 and 37, they have come to pass and been fulfilled in uh, some of the nations that are identified in Ezekiel chapter 38 are already hostile and considered enemies uh, to the nation of Israel. Uh, Russia is not considered to be uh, an ally of the nation of Israel. Uh, Syria is not an ally to Israel. Neither is Turkey. They're not uh, allies, neither is Iran or Iraq. Iran and Iraq, they share history uh, through the uh, ancient Babylon and the Assyrians. They have a mixed history intertwined with one another. Uh, so, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign, when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus, answering them, began to say, Take heed, or be careful, uh, lest any man deceive you. You've got to be careful. You need to read the Word of God. Jesus 
teaches us, if you continue in my word, you can then you are my disciples indeed. In fact, Jesus tells the scribes and Pharisees, you do err or you make mistakes because you do not know the scriptures. So you don't want to be deceived. Uh, you don't want to be uh, fooled. There is a fellow here in the uh, Philippines. Uh, I think his name is Kubaloy or Kibaloy. And uh, he thinks, he considers himself to be God incarnate. And apparently he has many uh, in the Philippines who agree with his conclusion. But Jesus says, uh, take heed lest any man uh, deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Now, that also can be people who rise up as leaders and they identify themselves as a, a man or a woman of God. I am Christ and they shall deceive many. Uh, they will stand up as if they have all the answers and uh, they'll represent themselves as men and women of God. Uh, the Word of God, uh, the Apostle Peter, he later reminds us that there were false, uh, pe false prophets uh, during the time of the of Jeremiah and the other prophets. He said there were false teachers uh, during uh, Jeremiah's day and that they will continue. Uh, they will continue uh, to exist and they shall deceive many. So you need to know the word. You, can, you need to continue to search the scriptures because in them you find eternal life in the word of God. Verse 7, And when ye shall hear of uh, wars and rumors of wars, uh, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and uh, troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. There are wars and rumors of wars. There are many people who are afraid that this invasion of the Ukraine, which is an invasion of uh, the European continent, uh, they see many similarities between this action in World War I and World War II. There are some uh, who believe that the the communist government in China will use the the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. They believe that they'll take advantage of this confusion. And while the world is focused on the invasion of the Ukraine, many believe that uh, China will be tempted to take action or hostile action against the uh, government of Taiwan. In the past, uh, the island was named uh, Formosa uh, in 
you have Japan. Japan used to occupy Taiwan. Uh, in fact, the Japanese, in the last 100 years, they have a stronger attachment, a stronger historical uh, connection with Taiwan than the Chinese do. Uh, because uh, for a long time, uh, Japan, J Japanese military, uh, government, uh, they possessed the island of Formosa. They possessed uh, Japan. And uh, Japan uh, still has a strong cultural history and connection uh, with Taiwan. It continues today. In fact, uh, Japan has come to an agreement with uh, the leaders of Taiwan and said that if you are attacked by the Chinese that Japan will fight as allies with you to deter the action of the government of the uh, Chinese uh, government or the communist government in uh, China. So there's wars and rumors of wars. Uh, recently, uh, the Chinese have uh, had encounters with the uh, people of the Philippines uh, challenging uh, Philippine uh, sovereignty over uh, war uh, over waters that used to be known as the uh, West uh, Philippine Sea, and now uh, China claims the waters as uh, in those islands as part of the South China Sea, but uh, uh, areas that have. The world a court has determined that these uh, uh, lands, these islands, uh, is considered to be uh, sovereign territory or sovereign water of the Philippines. So that uh, there are wars and rumors of wars. Uh, but Jesus teaches these are just the beginning of sorrows. It says, but take heed to yourselves, or be careful, pay attention. Uh, it says, uh, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in that uh, and in the synagogue shall you be uh, beaten, and she shall be brought before uh, rulers and kings for my sake. Uh, as a testimony against them. In the past uh, two years, governments have, uh, many governments around the world have been more menacing toward the civil rights and constitutional rights of its uh, citizens. We had uh, quarantine here in the Philippines, a nationwide quarantine for more than uh, a right at two years. Uh, and children were restricted to homes. They could not go to school. You recognize some of these things because they happen in your nation too. Uh, senior citizens were uh, urged to stay inside, ordered to stay inside, not to leave the house. Uh, many uh, churches in, were, uh, they were discouraged from meeting in perfect, or in a, per, a person. Uh, they were uh, restricted to 10% of the capacity of the building. 
a uh, lot of things uh, taking place that uh, many of us didn't expect to see in uh, free uh, nations, in constitutional republics. And yet, these things happen by the hand of unelected uh, bureaucrats, uh, not by uh, people who had been elected in uh, national or local elections. These things happen around the world and just shows you how quickly uh, freedoms that you hold dear can quickly vanish. And, uh, recently uh, in uh, Canada, you saw the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, uh, he he uh, put restrictions of, upon uh, political speech. They've uh, had uh, pastors arrested for having uh, services, and uh, they've seized the entire uh, bank accounts of political dissidents, people that did not agree with their actions politically and uh, so these things are happening around the world and some of these issues have not yet been decided uh, have have not been worked out in fact uh, in the United States there are there is a trucking convoy uh, that I understand is making its way toward uh, uh, Washington, D.C. We need to pray for uh, people that they would be led of the Lord and that God would give them uh, great wisdom and that they uh, would listen to the advice of men and women of God and they would seek the counsel of God and, uh, and be good representatives, good spokesmen uh, for the Lord. Many times, uh, men and women of God and scripture prophets, they spoke truth to power, but they were also willing to pay the consequences and uh, governments, um, they don't always side with the people of God. So you got to be prayed up. Uh, we see here that uh, uh, some uh, believers will be caught and delivered into councils uh, before boards. Uh, some will be uh, beaten in houses of worship and uh, brought before uh, leaders and government bodies and uh, for my sake and a testimony against the rulers against them uh, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you, when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour that speak ye, for it is not you that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death 
and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we're talking about perilous times. And if you've been paying attention to the actions of governments around the world for the last two and a half years, you see that uh, these things have come perilously close to what we have been reading about today in the scriptures. These things are preludes. Uh, some would say that they are uh, test testing the waters for events to take place in the future, the near future. You notice how quickly uh, they were able to shut down the economies of the world. Look how many people uh, lost their jobs, how many people lost their businesses, many people lost their reputations, and uh, many people were hungry. During this quarantine, however, our Father in Heaven continued to have mercy. He continued to bless uh, this ministry. Uh, we had to move to a, a bigger mission house. Uh, we began to feed more and more hungry people. God gave us uh, an open door and opportunities and um, he continues to move. Uh, we have seen uh, many young people draw closer to the Lord and in our services uh, frequently almost every time uh, it's standing room only uh, there aren't enough seats not enough room in the building and recently we've uh, uh, are using a, a bigger venue and that was packed out too just the other day so we as believers we need to be uh, we need to be paying attention uh, but when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet let those who have uh, standing where it ought not uh, be this is talking about in the future there are some things that are that will take place after the rapture of the church and there are things that uh, will take place uh, before the rapture of the church things have progressed so quickly that uh, people who are wise shall make themselves ready shall prepare themselves for things for the rapture of the church because these are things that are uh, taking place uh, so quickly, so very uh, quickly. I, want, I don't want to go any uh, farther right now because we're already uh, 35 minutes into this uh, prayer time and Bible study. You need to be prepared. Jesus said that the wise will hear these teachings. These are his teachings. The wise will hear and apply this right away to their lives. Right away. 
that Jesus said that there are some who will hear and believe it to be true, but believing themselves to be wise, they become fools. There are people who hear the word of God and, uh, and they will develop calluses on their ears. Uh, they develop calluses in their ears. They build up a resistance to the Holy Spirit telling them to be prepared, to be ready. Like the uh, parable of the ten virgins. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. The wise made sure that they had an ample supply. They wanted to make sure that they had more than enough anointing. They wanted to make sure that they had more than enough so that they could wait for the bridegroom. But the foolish, they thought that they were wise and uh, so they didn't take enough. They thought they were prepared. They were satisfied with the amount of anointing, with the amount of oil that they had. So they didn't take the action that was required to make sure that they had more than enough oil. So when it was heard that the bridegroom uh, comes, they want to borrow oil from their wiser friends. And they were denied because we want to make sure that we have enough for ourselves. So they went looking for more oil, but while they were gone, they, the bridegroom came. You need to make sure that you have more than enough anointing. You want to make sure that you have plenty of oil for when the bridegroom comes, because if you are not prepared, if you are not ready, uh, he will shut the door, and the door will not be open. There, the Bible doesn't tell us that he opens the door again. The time is lost. The opportunity is gone. Uh, we need to be paying attention. He tells us in First Thessalonians chapter 5, the Holy Spirit speaking through the Apostle Paul tells us, You know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. For when people are uh, talking about peace and safety, then as a pregnant woman will go into labor suddenly, uh, then they're will be no escape. You need to be ready. You need to be prepared. Jesus says that those who stay ready, who stay vigilant, are wise, and this benefits their family. But there are those who are foolish. They think they can uh, put off, delay, making the adjustments that are necessary to make sure they are prepared at all times. They think they have plenty of time. They think that they have pl plenty of time. They rest upon false security. False security. They think that they're secure, but they are wrong. In fact, uh, the Apostle Paul, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, he tells us that we need to take accurate assessment of ourselves. We need to take stock 
of reality. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. For we've all been given the measure of faith. What are you going to do? I urge you to be prepared, to be ready at all time. Because in a moment that you think not, the Son of Man will come. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangels, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. He tells us it is appointed for a man or woman wants to die, and after that is the judgment. But the next verse says that Jesus, he will appear the second time looking for those who are looking for his return. Yes, he's looking for those who look for his appearing. Be wise. Make that decision today. Let's take time to pray. Pray with me if you want. Dear Heavenly Father, I always want to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. I want to be prepared at all times. Remind me, Holy Spirit, to always seek to have more than enough of the Holy Ghost so that I can tarry until you come, so that I can endure to the end. Lord, help me to be ready. Help me to be prepared. Help me to live for you from the bottom of my heart one day at a time. Help me to pursue it one day at a time. Lord, I want to be close to you. You said in your word that you will draw near, if I draw near to you, that you draw near to me too. We thank you, Father. Speak to people. Help them to make that decision to walk with you every day, to be as close to you as possible every day. Lord, I want that safety, so I want to stay close to you, the Good Shepherd. We thank you, Father, that you always hear us when we pray. Help us to study your word every day. Give me, help me to identify good men and women of God who teach the word of God, who teach it from the word of God, where I can follow along and see that they're teaching and preaching what is found in your word. We thank you, Father. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank many of you who correspond with us. There are a few of you who help us to pay the bills. And we thank you to those who do that. And uh, we thank you for your faithfulness at, uh, here in the Philippines right now in Tanza. We have light rain and the temperature is back down to 
84 degrees Fahrenheit. And so it's a beautiful day. Pray for those in other locations, not in the Philippines, Western Hemisphere, Liberia, Africa, Australia, Hong Kong, Kenya, wherever you happen to be, contact us right here on this platform. Some uh, platforms give you an opportunity to hit the, the join button or the uh, join or follow button. Hit that so that you can receive the teaching that we produce every day. Well, you have a good day. Magandang uh, Gabe to those of you who are here in the Philippines. And uh, to those in other parts of the world, different time zones, uh, Buenos Dias, uh, Dios Libendega, may God bless you. And uh, God willing, we'll see you again in about 24 hours uh, via Kandios. May God go with you.